Hello, today we're going to go over chapter four, section two for honors chemistry. A quick recap of 4.1. Electromagnetic magnetic radiation is a form of energy that travels in waves. The equation C equals lambda times nu can be used to find the wavelength or the frequency of light or electromagnetic radiation. And you guys can see speed of light is a constant. So it's always this value. It's 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. That is the speed of light. So if that's a constant and you're multiplying the wavelength times the frequency to equal that constant, if the wavelength goes up, then the frequency, lamp, sorry, nu needs to go down. And if the <clears throat> wavelength goes down, then the frequency needs to go up to keep this equation true. Okay, we went over the Bohr model of hydrogen in 4.1. We're going to draw the Bohr models of lithium, fluorine, sodium, and chlorine um, just to give you guys a quick reminder. So we have to look up these elements on the periodic table and figure out how many protons and therefore how many electrons are in each. Okay, lithium um, has three electrons on the periodic table. So we can look that up just to make sure. Over here, there's lithium. So see its atomic number is three, therefore it has three protons and three electrons in there. So for the Bohr model, I'm gonna draw the nucleus as a dot and then the energy levels around it. Okay, that's all we're gonna need for the tiny lithium atom with three electrons. Remember this first energy level, the first ring holds two electrons. So I can add my two electrons there and then it's filled and we have one more electron to add. So it needs to go to the second energy level right there. Okay, so that's the Bohr model for lithium. It tells us a lot of helpful stuff. It tells us that there's one electron in this second energy level. <clears throat> fluorine, if we look up fluorine, it has, whoops, I did not mean to close that tab. Fluorine has nine electrons. Okay, so nine electrons because its atomic number is nine. So it has two in that first energy level, eight will fit in the second energy level. But once we have seven drawn here, so there's four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine electrons in the second energy level. It will hold up to eight, but we only had nine total electrons. So there's two and there's seven. We have nine drawn and you can see that there's this missing space where it needs an electron to be more stable. If we put these together, fluorine is the most electronegative. That means it has the greatest attraction for electrons element on the whole periodic table. So it will pull this one electron off of the lithium so that it will complete its octet right here. Okay, but you just need to know how to draw these circles here. Sodium has 11 electrons. And so if we draw the nucleus of sodium and the energy levels around it, <clears throat> we're gonna need three energy levels here. And we have two electrons in the first energy level. Eight will fit in the second energy level. So there's four, five, six, seven, eight in the second energy level plus two in the first energy level makes 10 electrons. We have one more to draw and we'll put it right there. So this is sodium. You can see it has one valence electron in the third energy level. And lastly, chlorine. Chlorine has 17 valence electrons. Let's make sure. There's chlorine. Its atomic number is 17 right here. So it has 17 electrons. We're going to draw the nucleus. There's energy level one, energy level two, energy level three. And it has, whoops, let me change the color. Here's my two electrons in the first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight electrons in the second energy level. There's 10 total. 
We have seven more to draw and they will fit in this third energy level. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You can see that chlorine is very similar to sodium. It's missing that last electron to make a complete octet in its outer energy level. So chlorine is also going to have a pretty high electronegativity. It's going to want to steal an electron to fill its eight in the outermost energy level. Um, sodium and chlorine, you know, they come together and make salt and ACL. They are the perfect pair because sodium has one valence electron, just like lithium did. And chlorine has seven. So when you put them together, once this electron is gone, you have a full octet underneath <clears throat> where it becomes more stable. And then this one becomes a full octet and it is more stable. And another thing I want you guys to notice is if you look up lithium and sodium on the periodic table, you'll notice that they are both in group one. So lithium and sodium have one valence electron. And that's what the period, um, sorry, the group, the group is these top numbers, tells us how many valence electrons. So lithium and sodium both have one. If we come over here, fluorine and chlorine, they're in group 17, they have seven valence electrons. So the group minus the one in front tells us how many valence electrons are in this group. The halogens have seven valence electrons. All right, the emission and absorption spectrum of hydrogen, we draw our orbitals like so. And then this is hydrogen. So I just have one little electron. Let's make it black so we can see it. If this is absorption, I want you guys to know that the electron starts in the ground state, which is the lowest energy that it can occupy, and it goes up to a higher energy level. It does that by taking in energy. So let's say we shine some violet light a low uh, wavelength onto that electron and it jumps up to a higher energy level. Now, if that electron goes back down, um, let's say it drops from energy level three down to energy level two. So it was excited and it's up here and now it drops down. It's going to give off light and it actually gives off red light when it goes from three to two. So we'll draw the longer wavelength of red light coming out. This is called emission. So absorption, the light comes in. This arrow should be pointing in for this wavelength and the electron goes up from energy level one to energy level three or something higher. Okay, it doesn't have to necessarily be these numbers, but it goes up in energy. And if it goes down, for example, three down to two, then that is emission. Okay, it's giving off energy. All right, so the quantum model of the atom is built upon what we've been talking about. And for us to discuss quantum numbers, um, I want to look at the address. So um, this is a made up address and it's telling us exactly what um, state, what city, what street, and what number this person lives at. So just like we use our address to tell uh, where we might live on the earth, the quantum numbers of an electron describe where the electron lives around the nucleus. Okay, and you can see that um, how many students might live in the same zip code. So a lot of people might be in the same zip code near the school, right? A few people might live on the same street. Um, but at the same house number, unless we're siblings, we wouldn't have more than one student at the same number. So there are different quantum numbers that describe where the electron is at. They might be in the same energy level. They might be in the same shape orbital, for example, uh, 2p. Okay, so we might have multiple. We can hold up to eight electrons in the second energy level. Um, so we could have multiple ones there, but only some of them would be in the p orbitals and only some of them would be in a certain orientation of the p orbitals, like p, x, for example. So we're gonna talk about um, what all of this means and how we know where the electrons are located. Louis de Broglie hypothesized that electrons have wave-like properties. 
So in 1924, we started to have the understanding that electrons act like waves, just like we've been talking about. 1926, Erwin Schrodinger or Schrodinger um, came up with an equation to quantify where the electrons are at. Um, so he determined mathematically the wave properties. We use the um, Greek letter psi to signify the wave function, which tells us it's a really complicated math uh, procedure where you would do the triple integral of the x, y, and z axis around the nucleus. Um, so when you do the integral, it tells you the area under a curve. Um, and so if you do it for x, y, and z, we know the area where the electron might be located. So the wave function tells us the probable location of the electrons, and the person that helped us come up with that is Schrodinger. Okay, and then we had Heisenberg in 1927 who said that we can't know the exact location and the speed of the electron at the same time. If you want to look up uh, the um, Schrodinger's cat, it kind of goes with this idea of not being able to know uh, the location and the speed at the same time. Okay, it's an interesting thing. And if you look up on minute physics, they have a minute long video on it. It's very interesting. Okay. So right here, we have a representation of the atom. And it's not perfect. It's far from perfect. This is a step up from Bohr's model. Okay, so um, Niels Bohr said that the electrons go around the nucleus. Let me draw the nucleus right there. The electrons go around just like the planets, um, which is not totally accurate. But this right here is going to be a step up from that. So we have the first energy level right here, one. The second energy level, energy level two, is both of these rings together. And the third energy level is gonna be all three of these rings combined. So these are the energy levels. Energy level, we call it N, okay? N is the energy level. And then we have sublevels within that. So these sublevels are called um, the orbitals. And we have different orbitals for um, each energy level. So there's, it starts with S. So we have a 1S, we have a 2S, and we have a 3S orbital. And then energy level 2 can have two different orbital shapes. So the second one is called the P orbitals. So we have S and then P. And lastly, in this third energy level, we have S, P, and D orbitals in that energy level. If I go out to uh, four, I have all of the possible orbital shapes, S, P, D, and F. Okay, and let's just draw those really quick. So it went S, S, the very first one of every energy level is always S. And then P is the second sublevel. So these are the P orbitals. And then lastly, we have D. Actually, you know what? That is not lastly. We can have a fourth energy level. That's going to be really messy if I try to draw it. So let's just draw a section of it, shall we? Two, there's three. And since there's four different shapes in this fourth energy level, we have four kind of sub levels here. So this is energy level four, and it's going to go S, P, D, is that third one and then lastly f uh, let's pick blue for f okay so s p d and f and that's as high as we go on the periodic table once we filled all of these um, we will have 118 electrons placed which is as many as are on the periodic table okay so really quick recap the orbital is the three-dimensional region they're not two-dimensional circles they're three-dimensional regions these are just representing them. Around the nucleus, that indicates the probable location of an electron. So not the exact location, but where we're most likely to find it. Quantum numbers are the address that specify um, where the electrons are at. And they tell us the things like the distance from the nucleus, the energy, the shape of the orbital, 
the orientation, like is it on the X, Y, or Z axis? And then lastly, the spin. All right, so we will get into the four quantum numbers next.